Hello, welcome back to 2-7. We're talking about the product rule. In the first video, we talked about how the product rule can help us compute the derivative of a function where we have two functions being multiplied together. And if you want a refresher on what the product rule is, you can watch the first video or follow that formula right behind me, as well as in our notes here. So the product rule, if a function is g of x times h of x, then the derivative of that function would be the derivative of the first function, g prime times the second, h, plus the derivative of the second function, h prime times the first, g. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish up this lesson. Um, in the first video, we talked about derivatives of analytic functions as well as tabular functions, so a table of values. And now we're going to go ahead and look at the third form, uh, which is graphs. So this example says the graph of g of x is shown above and consists of several linear pieces and two semicircles. Use the graph of g of x to answer the following. So example number nine, they say p of x is equal to g of x times the square root of x and they want us to find p prime of nine. Well, in order to find p prime of nine, I need to know what p prime of x is. So I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. The derivative of g of x um, and square root of x. So I'm going to have to use the product rule. So we have g prime of x times the square root of x plus the derivative of the square root of x, which is 1 over 2 root x times the first, which is g of x. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how I got this uh, derivative here, I recommend that you pause the video now and just kind of go off to your so off to the side and compute the derivative of x to the power of 1 half, and you'll see how I got that. Okay, so um, there is p prime. Now we want to go ahead and find what is p prime of 9. So I'm just going to evaluate g prime of 9 times the square root of 9 plus 1 over 2 square root of 9 times g of 9. Okay, so it looks like I need to find uh, the derivative at 9. It's going to be right here, and it looks like the derivative there is 2, and that function value is also 2. So g prime of 9 is 2, as well as the actual function value is 2. Okay, so just want to make that clear. The slope is 2, and the function value is 2. So we have uh, 2 times 3 plus 1, 6 times 2. So it looks like we have 6 plus one third. Okay, and there is your answer. Example 10, h of x equals x squared g of x. Find h prime of five. Okay, same game. I have to use product rule here because I have a function, x squared, and then a secondary function, g of x. So I'm going to find h prime of x first. Okay, so this is going to be 2x g of x plus g prime of x times x squared, okay? h prime of 5, I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So we have 2 times 5 times g of 5 plus g prime of 5 times 5 squared. Okay, so 10 times g of 5, so I'm going to go find uh, what that is, g of 5. So here's, and I'll do it in a different color this time. There's g of 5. Okay, so g of 5 is equal to, it looks like 1. And then while I'm here, I already know I'm going to have to find g prime of 5. g prime of 5. And g prime of 5, well, that's a vertical tangent line. So v prime of 5 is undefined. It's a vertical straight up tangent line. v prime of 5 is undefined. So um, our answer is going to be undefined. So that was 1 plus, well, this is, this is undefined. Undefined. 25 times undefined, uh, which doesn't make much sense. Um, 
So dot 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 dot. I'm gonna say h prime of five is undefined. Okay, there's our answer. Number eleven. Uh, example eleven. Uh, go ahead. I want you guys to pause the video and try this example. You you should feel comfortable enough to try this. Okay, I'll show you the answer here in a moment. Okay, k of x. If I want to find k prime of x, I got to take the derivative. Now the derivative of two that's just zero, and then I have a function. A um, couple of ways you can do this. You can leave the negative out or you can leave it with the x cubed. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on the outside. So k prime of x is equal to negative. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my product rule. So 3x squared times the second, g of x, plus derivative of the second, g prime of x, times the first, x cubed. Okay, so there is my k prime of x. And now k prime of negative 3 gives us negative uh, 3 times 3 squared times g of 3 plus g prime of 3 times 3 cubed. Okay, so i got to find 3. What's going on at 3? And at 3, it looks like we have a slope of 0, and that function value is negative 1. So g of 3 is negative 1. And the derivative is 0. OK. So negative, this looks like 27 times g of 3. That was negative 1. Okay. Plus 0 times 27. So it looks like we have a negative, negative 27, which is a positive 27. Is that right? I think that's right. Oh, that is correct. <clears throat> if I were taking the derivative at positive 3, this is negative 3. Why didn't you tell me? You should have told me. Okay, negative 3. Let me just fix this. Negative 3, negative 3. Okay, it still becomes 27. i got to double check uh, the values there. And then negative 3 cubed, that's going to be a negative 27. Okay. Okay, so negative 3. Looks like the slope is negative 1, and the output is 2. Output is 2. Okay, so this was a 2. This was a negative, negative 1. Negative 1, yes. Okay, so we have negative 54 plus... Um, 27 plus 27, which gives us 81. So negative 81 is our answer. Did you get that? Whew, I had trouble getting that. Dang. Okay, uh, example 12. Example 12 um, looks fairly straightforward, um, except the notation that they use is a little weird. So let's check it out. y is equal to e to the x times g of x. Find dy dx at x equals 0. Okay, so the notation, dy dx. They want us to take the derivative at y. So that's the same thing as y prime. I need to know what y prime is. And then they want us to evaluate at x equals 0. So um, this vertical bar, that just means evaluate at, and then x equals 0. So I'll save that notation. Uh, the first thing I need is I need y prime, which is e to the x times g of x plus g prime of x times e to the x. Okay, so there's just your um, product rule. And now we're going to go ahead and evaluate at 0. So e to the 0 times g of 0 plus g prime of 0 times e to the 0 which e to the 0 is just 1, so really this is going to be g of 0 plus the derivative of 0 
for G. So let's look at what's going on at, at, at G. So it looks like our function value is 1, and the slope there is 0. 1 and 0. Function value is 1. Slope is 0. So 1 is our answer. Okay, and confirmed. All right. So that's it. So that's a graphical response, um, which nothing new. We're just using a graph to find our slopes. Okay, um, examples 13 and 14 are, are kind of cool. They give us two graphs on one graph. It's a two-for-one special. This is pretty, pretty awesome and epic. The graphs of f of x and g of x are shown above and consist of several line segments. Let j of x equal f of x times g of x. Okay, example 13. They say find j prime of 2 j prime of 0 and j prime of 6. Well, if I got to find out all of those, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is find out what is j prime of x. So the derivative of the first, okay, that's f prime of x times the second, g prime of x plus derivative of the second, g prime of x times the first, f of x. Okay, so there's j and now, or j prime, and now I need to figure out, okay, what is, what is all of this? So j prime of negative 2. j prime of negative 2. So it looks like, whew, man, this is where like highlighters or different colors kind of come in handy. We could trace this function. So here's f. Well, I thought it was f. It's g. So there's g and then f is in blue. Okay, so there's my function. Okay, so we're at negative 2. Negative 2. Okay. And I'll put this in red. So f prime of negative 2. Um, that's going to be negative 1. So negative 1 times uh, g at negative 2, which is a negative 1, okay, plus, I'm going to plug g prime of negative 2, which looks like the slope of that line is 2, times f of negative 2, which gives us 3, okay. And again, this is f prime of negative 2, this is f of negative 2, this is g of negative 2, this is g prime of negative 2. Okay, so we have 1 plus 6, which is 7. All right, that's one example. They want all of these. Okay. Now, j prime of 0, j prime of 0, okay, so j prime of 0, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. The cool thing about what's going on at 0, notice right here, is the function values are the same. So f of 0 is 1, and g of 0 is 1, that's the same thing. And then the slopes, I think, are just opposite. So it um, looks like g of 0 is flat, 0, and then f prime, that's negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill that in. So I can make a list and then just now fill in these values. So f prime of 0, f prime of 0 is negative 1, times g of 0, that was 1, okay, plus g prime of 0, that's 0, times f of 1, which is 1. Okay, so all of this we get negative 1. Negative 1. Okay. All right, and then last but not least, uh, j prime of 6. Go ahead, please pause the video. I want you to try j prime of 6 on your own. 
All right, hopefully you went ahead and tried this. Uh, this one was a little tricky as well. If we look at six here, if we look at six, which is here and here, our f of six value, that was one, g of six value, that was negative two, f prime at six, that slope is one half, rising one half, and then g prime, of six is undefined, undefined. We have a sharp turn there. So this answer is undefined, undefined. Um, because again, if I just plug, plug all of this in, right, f prime, that's one half times g of six, which is negative two, plus g prime, here's an undefined answer. So because this is undefined, even though I have all these other values, this, this whole thing is undefined. So g prime of 6 is undefined. Can't do it. All right. Sorry to hit you with the, the trick problem on the example. Okay. They say write an equ equation of the line tangent to j at x equals 9. Ooh, they want the equation of a line tangent. So what are the two things that I need for a line. Just a quick recap. Well, the first thing, I need a point. I need an x and I need a y. So 9, well, for j, the y value for j, um, I got to go ahead and I got to find j of 9. j of 9. So let's go ahead. Let's calculate j of 9. So j of 9, that is going to be equal to f of 9 times g of 9. Okay, and so I have to find those two values, f of 9 is 2, f of 9 is 2, and g of 9, it looks like, is negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, so 2 times negative 1, which gives us negative 2. So there is our y value. So our point is 9 comma negative 2. There's the x, our x1 and our y1. All right, second thing we need, slope. Point and a slope, that's what you need for a line. So now I need to know, okay, what is j prime of 9? What's the slope at 9? So I can go ahead, I can use my function, right, from before, so j prime of 9 is going to be f prime of 9 times g of 9. Well, we already found out g of 9. We know that that's negative 1 times g prime of 9 um, times f of 9, which we know is 2. Okay, so let's go find the slopes. So I'll go back up to my picture. Um, f prime of 9, f prime of 9 is 0. That's a flat line. So my slope is zero, and then it looks like the slope on this line segment, rising one, running three. So g prime of nine is one third. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna plug this information in. This is zero, this is one third. We'll add those together, and two thirds is our slope, two thirds. Okay, so I have uh, everything I need. I can just go ahead and drop it into my um, point slope form, point slope form. And remember that that is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Okay, so y minus negative 2, which turns into y plus 2, is equal to m two-thirds times x minus x1, which is 9. And there's the equation of the line. All right, that is it. That is it. Um, in this video, we went ahead and we calculated how to use the product rule given graphs, so graphical templates, okay? Give me a thumbs up, like this video, subscribe for more awesome math videos. You can do the power roll. You guys got it. I believe in you. Catch you in the next one. Peace.